Hello guys, hello and welcome back to our little coffee club. I hope you all are having a wonderful day and I hope you're brewing something tasty. And today we're gonna stay on the reviews of the coffees that I brought back from the Bay Area, uh, from San Francisco and that area of California. Today we're gonna review this one here. This one, uh, I think I mentioned on the last video that I picked up at the ferry building, which is just out there where all the piers are and uh, close to the wharf. And we're gonna go ahead and do a small batch pour over again on the tricklet, kind of the same uh, method that we used last time. And we'll pull an espresso shot and see how that goes. And like, seriously, today I really need some coffee. I'm so sleepy for some reason. I'm just, like really tired today. So we'll go ahead and, and, uh, and make some coffee there. Now, something I wanted to report back on you guys, and, and by the way, I just, today is Sunday, I recorded yesterday, so last week's video, I for me, it was just yesterday, and I wanted to mention, because, uh, you know, I've been having some communication back and forth with, with Carrie, and uh, she's been uh, telling me about this coffee, you know, we've been talking about the Good Brothers coffee, the one that I had such a great experience, and still, I still have a little bit left, I, I'm saving some of it for a special occasion. <laughs> Anyway, uh, you know, there is a delay. She wanted me to mention that there is a delay between the conversation that's happening below the videos and, uh, and the videos themselves. Because I record the video, sometimes I might not post that video for a week, at least like a week, but sometimes a couple of weeks. And, you know, I might, in the video, you might hear me say uh, something like, uh, Carrie, I hope you were able to buy the coffee when I already know that she bought the coffee and she's been trying the coffee. So just keep that in mind. If you guys want to get a hold of me uh, and you want like what's going on like right now, you can always ask questions below and I answer everyone pretty much right away the same day. So, you know, you can uh, talk to me below here on the on the video, comment below and I'll, I'll answer you most likely the same day. You can also reach out on Instagram. If you send me a DM on Instagram, I make sure to answer you pretty much right away. Almost always the same day for sure. So anyway, today we're gonna go ahead and brew some of this Red Bay coffee. Let's see how we like this thing, I really need it. So let's get over to the, to the other counter and then we're gonna talk about what's going on with my espresso machine. I'm not a happy camper. You don't see any boxes back there or anything. So. We'll talk about that in a second. Let's make some coffee. All right, so if you guys are following me on Instagram, then you saw that this morning I made a, a pour over on the origami with this coffee. I have to say, uh, today I liked it better uh, than what I made on the video, which I used the tricklet. Now on the tricklet is kind of like a completely different workflow because I, I make these small batches because I also want to try it as espresso and I don't want to like overdose on caffeine. So. <laughs> So, but this morning I made my usual workflow on the origami with this and I really enjoyed it. I gotta say it was a little bit better still. It's really good coffee. You guys uh, check out their website. Again, you'll be doing uh, specialty coffee a favor as well as supporting uh, the veterans as well. So, so today we're gonna try this red bait. Again, another small batch. We'll do the, the same kind of process like last time. So let's get this bag open. Now I'm noticing that this bag, I'm probably not gonna be able to, oh no, this one does. Okay, no, this one does. This one has the little pull tab. It's different material than the Good Brothers, but we'll see if it has the Ziploc inside. That would be definitely a plus, cause I have so much coffee right now and only a couple of the fellow Atmos to keep them in. Okay, so yeah, this one has the same little Ziploc. So these things work very well. And if it doesn't break or anything, I don't mind keeping my coffee in here easily for a month. So that's a good plus here. You guys saw last time we took what was in here. There's, there's a few beans left that didn't fit in the Atmos, but everything is put away in the Atmos so it keeps the coffee as fresh as possible. Okay, so let's go ahead and dose out 10 grams and, and make a, a pour over here on the, on the triplet. Okay, I'm gonna grind on the K plus as I usually do for, for the pour overs. And I'm gonna go at, I'm gonna go at 660 clicks. Uh, it's just a number that usually works, works very well. Let's start the scale and those out are 10 grams. Okay, you know what? I did show, yeah, I did. I did show you guys the roast level of that coffee last time. But this one, first impressions, it's, uh, I would say it's a little bit darker than the Acme coffee. Let me show you guys. 
Okay, I believe the camera's focused there. You could see the roast level. So, I mean, it's still, eh, I would say this is closer to medium. Definitely closer to medium than, than the Agni one. But let's go ahead and grind it and see what, see what we get. All right, so we're at zero. See how much I had here? 7.3, we're going to 10. Okay, 9.9, nine. so unless we have a small bean, you can see. Okay, we went to 10.1. We're gonna roll with 10.1 today. Make sure it's sealed properly, put it off to the side, and let's warm things up. Let's grind this and warm things up. Okay, so grinding at six in such a small amount, this only takes a few seconds. Okay, give it a couple of taps, make sure it's loose, so everything went through. Lately, I kind of been tapping it on top like this, and then I try it again. You see, there was something, something in there. And then you see me do this again once I put it, you'll see, once I put it over the filter. All right, we got everything. Let's see, we had 10 grams. Oh, but I waited on, never mind. <laughs> I'm, not gonna, I'm not gonna go through that today. Okay, so we're gonna brew right into the cup again. I'm gonna use the little Storyville one again. Hope you guys liked that little story on the last uh, video as to this coffee shop right across the street from Pike's Market. It's really cool. You get that view and you can take that picture where you can be like have somebody sitting uh, just in front of that window and then behind the window you see the sign from the market which is kind of a cool picture. I always see that on Instagram and it was kind of cool that I got to take it myself once I got there. So. Okay, today I'm gonna reuse the filter that I had yesterday. Uh, these filters are so easy to, uh, to rinse and I, I have had no problems whatsoever using them uh, as much as three or four times. You know, just if, if you plan on use, using the uh, brewer for the next few, few days, just you could just use the same filter. You guys know how I don't like wastage if I can avoid it. So, all right, let's get things warmed up. Just give everything a pre-rinse and start heating up everything, the, the mug, the brewer. Okay, the kettle is at 97. It's just a temperature that 97 Celsius, so really just off boiling. Uh, I am at sea level here in Miami, so, uh, you know, boiling for us is 100. So um, it's just off boiling, and usually it's just a temperature that works for the lighter roast coffees. If this was a, a, a bit darker, I'd probably go down to like maybe 94, sometimes even 90, it depends. It's a good starting point for a lighter roast, medium to light. Really light roast, you might just wanna go straight to boiling. Okay, so let's dump this water out. Okay, let's get our coffee in here. See, this is what I was telling you guys. I'll just tap it again over the top like this. Well, I think I'm, I need to change the angle on the camera a little bit or move back. But anyway, I just topped the, the top just to see if uh, anything else comes out, nothing came out. We have our 10 grams. Always check it, sometimes there's a little bit of uh, coffee Staying stuck in there. Okay, let me move this. Let me move this back a little, see if this helps. I think we'll have a better angle there. Okay, so the first thing, you know, just kind of flatten things out in there and then use your WDT to distribute, declump everything, make sure you have the same density of coffee everywhere. 
I have, I have found that controlling channeling on the tricklet is basically the only thing you have to worry about. Okay, once you distribute everything in there, put the little shower screen back on there. See, we were talking about the mellow drip last time uh, as far as uh, uh, Carrie's uh, uh, pour over technique. She likes using the mellow drip. It's something like this. It just has a little shower screen that kind of controls the flow. And that's the idea here on the triplet. Okay, let's start the scale. Make sure you're at zero, start the time. Okay, we're gonna start with a blooming of maybe 50 grams. You don't really have to control the, the flow in any way with the trickling, just pour in there and the shower screen will do the rest. Okay, I went a little over, but that's okay. Main thing now is that we wanna use the WDT and use the, do that new, uh, what they call like the WWDT. I'm still trying to figure out what that's called. Please, somebody let me know. The wet wise distribution technique, where you use your WDT to declump, distribute everything, make sure everything gets saturated evenly. Okay. All right, it's pretty much drained through. We're at a minute. Now we're gonna go straight up to 180. So we gotta do, today's gonna be like another 120 grams going in there. Gosh, I, I, I think I still don't have a good angle for you guys. I'm sorry about that. Okay. Okay, we're at 183. So the only thing I've noticed that I like doing after this is kind of like give it a little bit of a, a swirl and a little bit of a shake like this, just to kind of flatten things out. But like this process, doing it this way, it's a lot easier than what I was doing before with the, uh, with the spoon and, and a, a bunch of swirling and stuff. It was very difficult to control the channeling, but I've had pretty good luck with this, uh, with this kind of technique. Again, for this small batches, We've been kind of staying between four minutes and five minutes, which I think is kind of long. I think I would like to get that down to maybe uh, three and a half to four minutes. But that just means you gotta grind a little bit coarser. Okay, let me rinse out the WDT tool. So rinse out your WDT and dry it. And it's ready for when we make espresso. So yeah, just after I finished recording for you guys uh, on Saturday and talking to you about uh, uh, Carrie's recipe for the Good Brothers coffee, then she commented uh, today in the morning on Sunday and let me know that she had again tweaked her, <laughs> her recipe and this time she brewed it for quite a bit longer. It was a, a bit over four minutes and that's a lot closer to what, to what I've been normally doing with that Good Brothers coffee. And she, you know, it elevated her score. She has like a scoring system for her, for her coffees. And at first, with her very first attempt, it was like middle of the road. She kinda, it, it's good, but nothing like very exciting. So I thought like, well, I guess it's just me then with this coffee. But then when she reported back this morning, uh, she said it, and this morning's brew is like an eight. So like, that's already like up there, like excellent, you know? And you know, now I, I feel like, okay, maybe it's not just me. So, <laughs> so anyway, I hope somebody else steps up, tries that coffee and lets us know what's going on with it. Okay, this is about to finish. We're at three and a half minutes. So maybe today I'll, I'll get what I want or at least what I'm looking for. Maybe it's not what I want, but we'll see. Okay, so again, Red Bay Coffee. If you guys are in the San Francisco area, check them out in the Ferry Building. Pretty cool coffee shop. Nice little area. You can walk around all over downtown there. We found it to be uh, pretty interesting. We took a bunch of pictures. Again, at the end of this video, if you stick around all the way to the end, maybe I'll insert a couple more images, a little bit more clips from, from our visit. Okay, so the final drawdown did take um, a little bit, you know, on the tricklet, as you get lower and lower, obviously there's less water pushing down on the ground, so it takes longer and longer as it brews. It's just about done. 
Okay, we're gonna call it. We're gonna call it is four minutes and 40, sec and 40 seconds. So yeah, that's roughly what we've been getting on these small batches. But hey, we've had very good luck. It's been excellent every single time. So let's get it to the other counter and, and uh, try it and give you guys uh, my first impressions. So I hope you guys are brewing something tasty. Cheers. Okay, you know, it's quite different than the Acme one. But you know, all these, <laughs> all these are always gonna be a little bit different. Yes, it's coffee, still gonna be coffee. Don't expect it to, to taste like chicken, okay? It's still coffee, but <laughs> you know, sometimes they're quite different. Sometimes the differences are subtle. Once you get into the like, light rolls, specialty coffees, they're all gonna be, you know, somewhat similar. Uh, sometimes you get one that is, uh, you know, gives you something more that you can, wow. Like it happened with this one. And you know, after today, I feel somewhat vindicated. <laughs> Thank you, Carrie. She has vindicated me from her previous score. So, but you know what? It's not gonna be for everyone. This, there's a coffee out there that's perfect for uh, each and every one of you guys. And I hope you guys let me know, comment below. Let me know what's your favorite coffee so far? What's your favorite taste profile? Is it like a fruity coffee? Is it more like a, a, a citrusy coffee? Is it like a, like a more developed roast, like, the, like a darker roast, like that burnt sugar, caramel, chocolate kind of tasting coffee? Um, is it more like very, very at the other end of the spectrum, something very light? Uh, that's kind of green tasting and like leaves and uh, some kind of tea. Do you like the coffee to be like very subtle, gentle flavors, like what I've experienced so far in the Geisha coffees, for example? Or do you like something that punches you more in the face? You know, I've been noticing that I kind of like something that has highs and lows, something that really gives you that kick. And this did it for me. I'm, and it's still doing it for me, I gotta say. There's something about it, <laughs> like I said. There's some kind of magic that happened between myself and this bag of coffee. But, all right, let's 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 give another try to the red bait. Okay, let's see. Well, you know, Definitely like fruitier, like it's just overall, a, a, not by a whole bunch, okay? These are subtle differences, but definitely this one has a better flavor. I would say this one I like better than, than this one. We'll see as espresso. This one, as pour over, I like them more as espresso than pour over. We'll see what happens with this one. Maybe this one I end up liking more as pour over and less as espresso. So we just have to, we just have to see, but right now, it's nice. And you know, these small batches uh, on, the, on the triclet has been working very well. I gotta say 10 grams in, 180 grams out in about four to four and a half minutes. It's working just fine. I, I get a super nice cup. This is rich and tasty. Yeah, definitely a lot of flavor here. This is definitely a good one. I'm gonna insert maybe right here, okay, my first impressions when I went to this coffee shop, share with you guys a couple of uh, images and, and maybe a, a clip or two of when I first visited this, this coffee shop in, in San Francisco. So I'm gonna insert that right here. Here we are, another coffee shop, Red Bay. I'm gonna check these guys out. They got some pretty interesting uh, signature drinks. Let me show you guys one of them. Not sure if you could see it there, but the black charcoal latte at Red Bay Coffee. I think my wife is gonna order one of those, so I've never tried anything like that, so we'll see how that goes.
hope you guys uh, like that. You guys saw that uh, my wife ordered that, uh, I think it was called charcoal latte or something like that. I'll, uh, I'll put the picture of the, of what that looked like here if, if I didn't do so already, but you guys could, I'm sure the name was on the advertising of that drink. And I tasted it. I think it was made with uh, coconut milk. I, I don't even remember if I've ever had that before, but it, I couldn't tell the difference as far as the milk. It just tasted creamy and it was very sweet. As a matter of fact, I think it had a, a bit too much sweetness, too much sweetener in there, but it was very tasty. It was uh, kind of strange, you know, uh, uh, <laughs> I don't know black milk is just not something I'm used to it, there's a um, a great a, a small amount of graininess to it also as well I don't know what they put in there but uh, yeah but and also it turns your tongue black so if you <laughs> not if you just taste it I tasted it and nothing happened but by the time my wife finished the the whole drink her tongue was completely black and it was funny it was, it was really funny if she allows me i'll put a picture uh here of that but i doubt it okay so don't be expecting it so but anyway i we all thought that it was very funny and you know what it was a tasty drink it was an experience right I, i've seen also on instagram that they make this green one i, I imagine they probably with that matcha or whatever that stuff is and um, comment below if you guys know what, how they make that one but if I run into it out there in, uh, in, the, in the coffee world, I'll go ahead and order one and, and report back to you guys. But this charcoal one is an experience. So if you run into one, uh, try it, okay? Anyway, I, I don't want the video to get like super, super long. So I'm gonna enjoy the rest of this cup, which again, as pour over, pretty nice, pretty nice. I, I'm not outstanding to like, <laughs> to the level of uh, the Good Brothers, but very nice. I liked it better than this one. So let's, uh, uh, you know, give me a second to finish the cup and then I'll meet you guys at the other counter and we'll pull a shot of espresso. All right, so the Red Bay. So as I was enjoying that cup and finishing it up, uh, this is what I want to tell you guys about it. So this one, I find it to be very well balanced, uh, very mild acidity, you know, it's very similar uh, to the Agni, I gotta say. I did like this one a little bit better, but uh, similar in the way that it's very well balanced. It is somewhat more developed than a lot of the lighter rolls out there. So they do say medium here. So uh, I would agree with that as being a, a more like a true medium. Uh, it's a little bit more developed. So yeah, so for sure, very mild acidity, very well balanced with some uh, nice sweetness. Now, as far as the tasting notes, you know, it says clementine, hibiscus, and candied ginger. I don't get any of that. So I would not have guessed at any of this. It, it does to me taste uh, somewhat like a fruitier coffee, uh, but again, with a very low acidity. So what kind of fruit? I don't know, something that's not very high in acidity. So <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what to tell you guys, but I didn't get any of these things from this. Uh, let's see what we can get as far as espresso. So let's let's go ahead and, and dose out our 18 grams. And by the way, my machine timed out, so. Everything's really nice and hot though, because it's been on for an hour, so. But we'll see, in a few seconds, we can pull a shot, so. That's one of the advantages of this little grub, I do have to say. It's ready almost instantly. Uh, if you ever do a cold start, you could just pull a couple dummy shots and you're ready to go. So right now everything's hot, so I don't have to do the dummy shots. Okay, the niche is set at 16. We're gonna go ahead with that. That's, that's the setting that worked for the Agni coffee, I believe. And we're gonna try the same with this one. So let's try to dose out our 18 grams. Let me, let me get closer to you guys. Of course, we're gonna be checking retention. I know how that's everybody's favorite part. I always say it guys, but come on, you know it's true. For some reason, we love to see if there was retention. <laughs> oh boy. Man, where am I going with this? Okay, I only need 18. Let's see, 17, 17, eight. 9, 18, 18, all right. Right on the dot, 18 grams. Let's see what we get out from the niche today. 
again, Iceman, I still haven't ordered the little thing, but I will, I will. Oh yeah, we have to talk about the espresso and everything. The, I mean, my espresso machine. Why it's not here yet? We'll talk about that as soon as I get back to the counter. Okay, so 18 grams, let's see. guys let's see I had 18 grams let me do it one more time just in case tap this thing my friend Angel says that you well not just Angel I now I've seen that a few people they like to tap this thing to try to get a little bit more <laughs> I gotta get the little plunger you get the little plunger like Iceman says I wouldn't be dealing with this but you guys know that 0 0.1 0 0.2 to me it makes it makes no difference look we got a little extra we're at 18.2 so we're gonna roll with that again 0 0.1 0 0.2 makes no difference to me once I get into like 0 0.3 0 0.4 then that's when I kind of like to adjust things all right let's do some puck prep okay this is already dry today then sometimes it has some condensation on there obviously if you're pulling more than one shot then uh, you'll, you'll have to dry it but today it was dry I like to check always anyway Okay, so dosing ring, 18 grams in, we're gonna try to get about, uh, we're gonna try to get about 50 grams out, so basically roughly a one to three ratio. Let's do some WDT. Again, the WDT is just some little thin wires to kind of help you declump and distribute everything in here. I think it's even more necessary for the triclet than it is for espresso, but whatever, you know, it's part of the routine, part of the workflow, it's using all these toys. Okay, let's see if I top it down, but this is looking like way too fluffy today. We're gonna have to push it down with this tamper. When I remove this, if I were to remove this right now, I'll probably have a little spillage. So I don't want that to happen, so then, you just use the, the tamper that came with the machine to kind of push things down a little bit. Okay, so that's gonna be good. Now when I remove this, everything's in there. Then we could use this tool to distribute. I don't think this is vital, but I have it, so I use it. As a matter of fact, I'm not even sure if it does anything. I think if it presses down enough, it probably does and today it probably did because the coffee still was quite high so I uh, you know I think doing distribution when this in this scenario I think it does help and it works a, a bit so I start tamping with this one this tampers a lot more accurate than the one that came with the Breville than this one if you just tamp with this one you end up with a bunch of coffee all around and you know so I always start with the other one I mean I if you don't have it just use this you don't really need it but Okay, and then we tamp, because you want to keep the pressure the same every time. Okay, you want to be consistent with this. So you press it pretty much the same every time. So it went down very, very little. I think today we're going to be right on the ball. I, you know, I think we'll get like a 40 second shot and for me that's perfect. So let's see. I could be totally wrong, but usually I'm pretty accurate. Okay, lock it in and let me bring you guys in a little bit closer. I didn't have my small scale out. Gotta get that. Here we go. All right, start the scale. You guys know how I use that automatic espresso mode. I really like doing it this way. Again, there's a lot of debate as to whether you should time your shot from first drip or from pressing the button you know i think both sets of data are very good to have you should probably get both sets of data if possible okay so now it's zeroed out and we can do pre-infusion now if your pre-infusion is about the same every time and it starts to drip right away after that 
then you know you had like a five six second pre-infusion and then whatever the shot takes to uh, to brew wow I'm too fine look today I maybe I had it totally wrong let's wait and see but oh here's the trick so but yeah today nothing's working this is com completely choked wow I'm surprised I'm surprised but <laughs> okay there he goes he's getting something in there but yeah this is uh, totally no good the scale didn't, didn't start oh boy the troubles so the trick to this is you know they have said that if it's brewing very slow you just touch it and just touch it every now and then so that the scale doesn't stop on you and I have done that trick and it usually does work you know like right now look it's still going so you just every now and then give it a little tap it stopped on me anyway <laughs> nothing went right today <laughs> Oh, the struggles, the struggles. You guys will see, there's some new toys coming in and <laughs> we'll get to the bottom of this sooner or later. Anyway, we're gonna have to go obviously coarser. We're at 16, let's go to 17 and a half and see what happens. That's quite, you know, whenever I do that, I down those. And I'm gonna have to because I, I mean, I, I was barely able to uh, tamp that down right now. So I'm gonna go to 17.5 on the niche and I'm going to down those to 17 and a half uh, grams of ground coffee instead of the 18 grams. Okay, so there's, there's your setting. It's at 16, that's 17, and roughly 17 and a half right there. Now the niche being a stepless grinder, you can always do endless tweaking with this. Okay, I think I'm, I have it there, 17 and a half. So we're gonna try that and, and see, see what we get. So yeah, I think today is actually the first video where I was totally off, I'm guessing on the timing. <laughs> I knew it would happen sooner or later. So let's try to dose out another 18 grams. We're at 17 and a half on the niche. Oh, that's right. We're gonna down those to 17 and a half. So again, uh, to get ready for another shot quickly, just rinse out your porta filter really well. And, and then, um, uh, clean a little bit the shower screen and then pull a dummy shot right into your shot glass put the shot glass with the warm water so it could stay hot on top of your machine and then um, you know after that you could basically pretty much pull another shot so let's toss out our 17 and a half grams okay so 17 and a half okay Let's see, 17.5. Okay, so 17.5. Let's see what happens with the niche now. Man, nothing worked right on that shot. Holy cow. The, the scale didn't work right. The machine didn't, well, I, that was my fault, right? I, I, <laughs> I didn't have the right grind setting, but again, new bag of coffee, you're always gonna have to go through the dialing in process. See what happens this time. Okay, we were at 17.5 and we're at 17.4 now, so that's good. I think that's focused there, so set you see at 17.4, so we're good to go. Let's do puck prep again. Okay, so now when you remove, when you remove your porta filter, it's gonna have water in it because you pulled a dummy shot, so make sure you drain it. Okay, and then just uh, dry it because this time obviously you do have to dry it. So dry it well, and we're good to go again. Everything's nice and hot. Okay, so 17 and a half grams. Ground at 17.5 on the niche. Again, some WDT. Tap it. 
Okay, this time it went far, far down enough to where I can remove this. If not, remember to use your other tamper to kind of push, push it down. Distribute. Tamp. Finish tamping with this one. Keep the pressure the same. Yeah, that didn't go down at all this time, so at least I didn't feel it. Okay, clean things up and let's lock it in and I'll bring you guys in closer to try another shot. Let me empty out the shot glass. Okay, that is really nice and hot. <laughs> oh man, I wonder what the scale is going to give me this time. We'll see. Get it in there. Turn it on. What will we get this time? All right, try again. Okay, it says it's ready, we'll see. Here we go, pre-infusion. Okay, ideally we should get a little bit of dripping right away like this, okay? Not a whole bunch because then you're gonna be too fast. But this is looking spot on perfect right now. Let's see what happens. Again, we'll try to get about 50 grams out. Yeah, this is working out pretty perfect this time. Let's see. Okay, we're getting there. All right, stop it. Wow, I got it right at 50. <laughs> okay, 50 and 43, still a slow shot. It still was slow, so, and wow. I'm at 17 and a half uh, with 17 and a half grams. So, I don't know. I'm gonna make a note of that uh, for now. And next time, I'm not sure if maybe try to go to 18. But let's see, I mean, the main thing is let's see what it tastes like. I might not wanna adjust anything. Maybe it's spot on and perfect. Let's try it. All right, so Red Bay Coffee Roasters. Let's give it a try. Let me stir it up a little bit. Again, this one has a little bit more aroma than the, than the Agni. Let me try it again. All right, a little bit more acidity. Uh, obviously you can get that to have more acidity if you just uh, uh, have a faster shot. So, um, is, it, is it balanced though? Let me, let me see. That's the thing. It's very well balanced, so I wouldn't wanna bring up the acidity and lose the sweetness. I think right now it's just perfectly balanced between the acidity and the sweetness, just like the pullover. It's just not a coffee that's gonna wow you. It's not gonna give you the highs and lows. It's not gonna give you something very exciting. There's not a lot, a lot of uh, nuances and flavors in there. At least I'm not getting them, um, you know. Try one more time. Yes, yeah, nice and thick. You know, the, the niche always gives you those nice, gooey, thick shots, really nice. But there's just not a lot of excitement there. It's very good coffee, don't get me wrong. It's up there, but again, it's not, uh, I don't think it's gonna wow you, okay? But it's perfectly okay when I had it at, you know, at the location, the service was very nice. They did let me record. I was able to do, you know, whatever I wanted there. And, and I love that the building, the ferry building and the location, everything is a awesome place to visit. Again, we tried that uh, charcoal, or I can't remember exactly, but 
obviously there were pictures already by now here and and, and, and you guys saw what what the drink was called but that black uh, latte or and, and you know it was very tasty and nice so the experience overall was great and this coffee is not just not very like exciting okay it's perfectly okay i would be extremely happy if i went anywhere out there and asked for a shot of, asked for a shot of espresso and i was served this okay or if i went to breakfast at any restaurant in town and they did a pour over like what i got just a little while ago i would be extremely uh, grateful for that okay because usually it's not gonna be that good okay this is way above what you're gonna get uh as your average cup of coffee out there in your local diner okay so it's still it's still excellent but again we you know we are into uh specialty coffees and we but us that have been doing this for a little while and consider ourselves hobbyists uh, you kind of start to get spoiled, you know, with something that gives you something extra and you kind of get wild by it. This one's very good, but again, I'll, I would put it in the middle of the range together with the Agni, together with a, a lot of other ones that, yes, they're very good, but it's not like something that goes, you know, <laughs> way up there. So again, let me see if it, if it says where this coffee is from, okay? Because it says Motherland, it's called Motherland. So I would imagine for, for sure it's an African coffee and I would, you know, it, uh, coffee started in, in the Ethiopia region. So maybe it's from Ethiopia. So Kenya. Okay. So again, the motherland area. So very well named, <laughs> lovely coffee. Cheers guys. Okay. So let's talk about what's been going on with the espresso machine so on last week's video which for me was just yesterday i recorded yesterday i was expecting my espresso machine to be delivered so later that e that evening i saw i had an email from uh, ups saying that they couldn't deliver my machine because you know we live in a we we live in a gated community and according to UPS, they couldn't get access, okay? <laughs> I don't know if it's because it was the weekend. I don't know what's up with that, but all I know is that they, that's what it said in the email. They couldn't get access that they would try again on Monday. So Monday's tomorrow. So we'll see if I receive it. If not, it said something on the email about being returned to the sender. Oh man, I hope that doesn't happen. <laughs> so anyway, if hopefully I receive it tomorrow and that's the end of it. But. If I don't receive it tomorrow, I'm going to try to reach out to UPS and tell them not to send it back. And maybe I can pick it up at, at my local um, hub, UPS hub here in town, which I've done uh, in the past. I've gone to the UPS hub and picked things up there. So hopefully they'll allow me to do that. Anyway, I still don't know what's uh, going to happen with the espresso machine. Hopefully you guys will see it at the next video. And I did start receiving a couple of the little, little gadgets that I, that I ordered for it and we're gonna get to play with all of that pretty soon so that's what's going on with the espresso machine <laughs> hopefully hopefully i do receive it tomorrow anyway i'm gonna enjoy the rest of this but i am gonna let you guys go here again maybe i'll try to put some more uh, clips and images of our uh, trip to the bay area here at the end of the video Maybe you guys stick around to see that. If not, remember when I say I'll see you next week, it's time to click off. <laughs> anyway, guys, thank you for watching. Oh, you know what? Uh, last, um, well, yesterday or this, I should say this morning. Okay. <laughs> this is a little confusing. This morning, there was a lot of interaction between you guys and myself. Uh, people leaving comments and asking me stuff and going back and forth. And, you know, that's what makes these videos worth it to me the interaction between us it's what makes it fun i always say it filming myself making coffee week after week is not a whole bunch of of fun i don't mind doing it and but if you guys are enjoying it and we are uh, building this little community and having the interaction back and forth then that's what really makes it fun so i um i really appreciate it those of you that have gone out of your way to leave comments give the video a like and all that and all that good stuff so hopefully you guys do it again for this video uh, again, if you want to reach out on Instagram, you can kind of, uh, you know, pretty much get instant access on there to, to you know, uh, reaching out to me and, and having some interaction. Uh, obviously, if it's a, a, work, a work day during work hours, I might take a while before I can get back to you. But 
uh, on the weekends and in the evenings and stuff like that. I'm usually easily uh, accessible on, on there. If not, please comment something below or do both. I mean, if you comment below, that really helps out the, the channel. So comment below, give the video a like, subscribe if you haven't done so already, and I'll see you guys next week. <laughs>